You find yourself in the backcountry without a compass. I've got a compass I'm gonna to use to show you how to do this technique, but all you really need is a stick. So how do we find north using just a stick? Stick with me. If you're in the backcountry, you don't have a compass, and you want to know where north is, all that you need is a sunny day like we have right now and a stick. So what I'm going to do with this stick right here, push it nice deep in the dirt, and make sure that it's solid. If the wind is moving it around, it's going to be a hard measuring instrument. The more precise you are with this kind of stuff, the more exact your measurements are going to be when you're done. So I put my stick in the ground. The next thing that I'm going to do is get a rock that I can recognize as something that wasn't there originally. Sometimes I'll lick it. What that does is it cleans the top off. Yes, some dust is going to blow over the top of it, but especially if I have a really red rock or something that sticks out, it gives me the ability to recognize in the future. Now I'm going to take where the top of this stick is I'm gonna put that rock right on top of that shadow. Okay? Now all we have to do is wait for about 15 minutes. We'll come back to where that rock is and measure its movement and go from there. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes. Right now we've got the rock right here and the tip of the shadow right here. I'm going to put another little rock right at the tip of that shadow. And what that does is it gives us a line. Okay. Now I'll take a little stick here, put it between those two, and that is going to give us an east-west line. So let's think about this for just a second because you can either memorize that that's east and west or you can use logic to determine that. I like to use logic because logic doesn't require memory or, or memorizing things. When you're tired and you're exhausted and you're in the backcountry, if you say it was east to west or west to east and you just can't remember, use logic to come up with that answer. So if this is east and west, either that's east and that's west or that's uh, west and that's east. The next question is, where does the sun rise? Well, the sun rises in the east. I know it rose over there. It sets in the west. It's heading over there. And I know this because the sun hit the stick from this direction to create the first point. The sun has moved behind me, and now it's hitting the stick from this direction to create the, the second point. That tells me the sun is traveling in this direction, east to west. Therefore, this line is pointing east and west. Now all I have to do is add my stick to this at, at a 90 degree angle, and I have true north, true south, east, and west. That's important. Um, the reason that's important is because the further you move from Georgia in the United States, the further your, your magnetic north is wrong. Quick way to put that, I guess. So if you're in Georgia, it's at about zero uh, degrees between magnetic north and true north. As you start to go further, because magnetic north is north of Hudson Bay and not on the North Pole, your angle starts to change. Here in Utah, we're at about 13 to 15 degrees to the left, I'm gonna say, for ease of explanation. So my true north is, or my magnetic north is here, my true north is here. So if I lay my compass down on top of our little cross that we've made, 
I can see that magnetic north is here and true north is here, and that's roughly 15 degrees, okay? So to be blunt about it, our stick method is more accurate at north than my compass in this part of the world because the magnetic north pole is north of Hudson Bay and not actually on the north pole. If you were in Hudson Bay or north of where the magnetic pole was, you really have to understand how to transfer from a magnetic to a north or use this stick method. Hopefully this is valuable to you. This is Tyler White teaching you how to find true north using a stick and a shadow. Thank you for watching.